did you say? They want a wonder. I would certainly like to. They want a wonder. Oh, I don't think so. What did you say? He's out. He's holding me back. They want a wonder. What did you say? They want a wonder. Wanna, wanna, wanna. What did you say? They want a wonder. I would certainly like to. They, 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 they want a wonder. They want a wonder. Wonder. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to this another episode of Diwana Wonga, a Star Wars Shatterpoint podcast. And it's fair to say that AMG have very much been on the Marvel Crisis Protocol bandwagon for a little bit of time now. And it's and it's fair. Um, Shatterpoint was in the limelight for a long, long time. Uh, but joining me to break down all of the things that have been happening, which is essentially a single mission pack, but a single mission pack that makes a very, very big difference to the game is, of course, Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? Cool. Um, Shatterpoint. Got a whole lot interesting again. Um, we're thick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're thick of little things, aren't we? Like shine, sh <clears throat> sh show us, sh show us shiny, shiny new things. Oh, we can't hear Quinn. Uh, Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? We messed up there. Well, I, I made a high pitched noise, but I'm not doing it again. Don't do it again. No, uh, no. Um, lost out all because of Rich. And his technical failings. <laughs> no, what I was going to say, Quinn, is like, it's not that Shatterpoint was stale by any means, but I think we, I don't know many people um, that played as many games as like me, you, Ron, Phil, Kendo, Glyn. <clears throat> like, <clears throat> we were getting a, you know, a lot of games in work. We sometimes three, four, five a day. Um, sometimes maybe even more between us. I mean, I and think I'm when... almost halfway to 100 ranked games as well. Which, yeah, uh, which is just is definitely something. absolutely crazy. Sorry, I'm just closing my window because it's noisy out. Um, <clears throat> which is crazy. And I think, and, it, and, it, and it's kind of our fault, right? But because we played it so much when it first came out, <clears throat> for me, the new characters alone wasn't enough um, to to really keep it fully interesting for me. Um, we've been waiting for this mission pack. Um, it hasn't officially released yet. I believe the date is Friday. Um, I was hopefully getting hold of mine yesterday when I went and actually played a game of Shatterpoint at the Odis, but they hadn't turned up, so it's getting delivered, so it'll probably turn up tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> but we have managed to get hold of the cards um, in their true format. We've seen the French versions. We've seen some weird translated versions but we actually have um the proper versions of the cards and you'll be glad to know guys uh that as your designated mod developer for the uh shatterpoint mod on tts they are now all in there so you can go ahead and play some sabotage showdown but let's start off quim let's take a look at the mission card itself because the setup on this is very very different um First of all, we are going from having nine um, objective markers to seven on this one. But everything that must mean is... that scoring is so much slower. Oh, oh. yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, <clears throat> but everything is pulled into the middle, isn't it? Um, but weirdly, depending on the map, it can either be carnage or it can be very very strategic and we'll explain why especially in the in the first struggle but what's new and what's different about this one quinn isn't it right as well as the different layout it is also the fact that we have these new abilities that are on each individual struggle and it's every single struggle phase one phase two and phase three all have um um a are we calling it? A, it's a tactic ability, isn't it? That's what it is. Yeah, it is tactic. a tactic ability um, that will trigger whenever you activate a character 
with the shatter point card. So some additional value to the shatter point, which I really like, Quinn, because it means that you don't always, I mean, you don't always necessarily have to just go with your big hitters with the shatter point, but the fact it gives it something else as well, um, yeah, I think it means it just extra. adds... Yeah, I think it just adds some more tactics into the game, doesn't it? It can also um, sort of incentivize a shatter point when normally, you know, you might have been shuffling it back into the deck. You know, if you get the one that brings you a force back or can do some healing, that potentially, like, tips you over the edge and you actually go with that shatter point. Like, it's another interesting decision point. Yeah, I, I also think, especially when you get the force one, for example... Uh, and we'll go into what, what each of them are. Um, I think it really detracts. Like, I've been a... Yeah, I've, been, I've been playing Kalani for a long time. I absolutely love him. And I've always had it in my mind that, to, you know, round one, I have two cards in my deck that I can pull as my first um, as my first activation. And I'm going to be happy because it's the Shatterpoint and it's Kalani. And they both end up being the same character. Um, but I... I think it very much detracts you from using the shatter point turn one, doesn't it? If it's particularly if it's force, uh, maybe not if it's a movement, for example, because it may be that that means you can get a big hitting character up into the middle of the board doing attacks round one, whereas you know beforehand that may have not been possible. So it it adds a huge element to the game, and I think you mentioned this Quinn before we came online. Um, we thought this was going to be the biggest difference, right? We thought this was going to be the big thing, but actually it's not, is it? And and, and we'll get on to what that is um, in, in a little while. But overall, Quinn, um, how, how do you feel about the tactics and, and how, you know, how they work in the game when we don't just get force ones because that's all we got? <laughs> yeah, um, they're cool. Uh, like I said, they offer like more decision points. Like it might make one shatter point activation a lot more attractive than what would conventionally in, you know, a shifting priorities game have been the obvious choice. Um, yeah, uh, one important thing to note is, as far as I'm aware, there is no limit to the number of tactics a unit can use at the start of its activation. So therefore, that is, that is if you're correct. using yeah. your shatter point on someone like a Mace Windu, a Plo Koon, uh, Rex, who has some sort of you know tactic when they activate, you're not having to choose between the two. So it's not necessarily incentivizing you to, I don't know, go with a support unit that doesn't have one, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So you can use... It's not an active ability and it's not a, um, a reactive, so you're not limited to being able to use one per, per instance. Um, so yeah, I, I believe that's correct. Anyway, I'm, I'm uh, as far as I'm aware, and from what I've seen, that is correct. It may yeah. not be. I don't know. I'm 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 pretty sure it is. Otherwise, I'm it feels. Yeah. I mean, or, or or is it a spanner in the works? Like, mm. I don't know. It feels very very harsh. Then on primaries like Dooku, for example, who does have a tactic, versus uh, Anakin, who doesn't. And, and I'm just using them to as examples of one that doesn't and one that doesn't um so quinn let's get on to the struggles themselves and let's take a look at um the phase one struggles because these are very very interesting we'll, we'll reveal them one by one but starting out we have got secure the exit so this is going to activate the six objectives on the outside of the well outside of the board but not really but away from the middle basically but all of them that are on the outside um, and it has the tactic ability of regroup at the start of this unit's activation it may remove two damage or one condition from itself now it's important to note that and this is kind of goes back to what you were saying Quinn this isn't um, a heal, right? This isn't you get to heal too, where you can do it either on yourself or somebody else. Yep. It has to be from the character that you are activating. Um, so I think this alone makes it quite different, doesn't it? Because it's, you know, if you've got this and you've got a character who kind of needs a little bit of a boost, um, 
you know, maybe they've got an expose on them and a few damage and you know that they're probably only one damage, you know, one attack away, this can really help, can't it? Maybe they've had, like, a strain slapped on them and you were umming and ahhing about their activation if you'd drawn their actual card, but the shatter point just sort of eliminates that issue. Yeah. Yeah, well, the double whammy, right? Get rid of a strain and heal off two damage if you've already got them there as well. Um, so, well, you yeah. get one or the other. Sorry, it is one or the other, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. It is one or the other. Um, so, I wonder what the layout of this new one's going to be. Yeah, well, ne next up then, we've got what? shut down the alarms. And, oh. Is that a mean? They, they are the same... The same layout. Uh, have you got them like mixed up in your scans or something? Maybe, yeah, maybe, mm. or or indeed, maybe not. Um, so it's the same layout, guys. And but this time we've got stick to the plan. At the start of this unit's activation, refresh one force. Um, this can be very powerful because this can be you know you're down to zero. All of a sudden, you get a shatter point and you pull an Obi-Wan, for example, and it's not pull an Obi-Wan, but choose to activate him, and all of a sudden bringing online something like hello there, or just you know, ju just that I mean, force that you need to do you, what you it is you want to do. like at Anakin's, maybe taking a wound, or your half troopers are down, you pull the shatter point, you want to go with Anakin anyway, you get that one force back, you're bringing online, you know, uh, I'm going to end this, or a uh, coordinate fire expose... There's a lot of applications for this one. Yeah, and it's nice as well that obviously that that force is a pull. So irrespective of the character that you activate, or the, the model, the unit, sorry, that you activate, um, that force can be used by anyone. So to your point, Quinn, it can be an active ability on the character that you're activating, or it can be a reactive ability on another model as well. Um, you know, could be a Cad Bane. Could be a Cad Bane who, you know, you're going to do some do an attack and you can then finish them off with Cad Bane who then refreshes two force back as well which is real good um, really really good actually I, you know it's quite nice um, but yeah this this can really come in clutch really really come in clutch especially when you're getting towards the uh, and, we'll, and we'll talk about how our phase ones have gone Quinn um, but especially when you're getting to the latter end of your deck maybe if you've got a deck um, or a, a, a strike team, sorry, that doesn't have, um, f you know, force refresh capabilities built in there. Um, this can really, really come in clutch, can't it? Um, and then lastly, Quinn, we have got set the charges. And yes, they are all... Can you stop putting your mouse in front of them, please? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get chat to pop out so I can just have it on one monitor. <laughs> um, <laughs> so set the charges. Uh, same layout. Uh, this time we've got press forward. At the start of this unit activation, each character in this unit may dash. And again, Quinn, in the past where shatter points have, again, not exclusively been for the use of primary, sometimes secondary characters. I get there's niche scenarios where you will, you know, you can win a round or something or, or win a struggle by activating a support unit. Um, but the supports right now in the game are the only ones that are going to get to make two dashes off this. Mm. And that can be very, very impactful because anytime you can swing two points, it's it's absolutely huge. Um, so I, you know, I really like all of these. I think they add a different element into the game. Let's talk about Queen because we've got to the point. Let's talk about the, the biggest impact and the biggest thing uh, that we found from this. And it's the fact that there is no variety in yeah. Struggle 1. Now, and I, and I want to just point this out, Queen, and, and, and this can, you know, this will, you'll either agree or not. I'm not necessarily saying that is a bad thing. I'm just saying it is a thing. And it's a thing that I don't think we expected them to do. Um, we didn't expect them to have six active points. Um, and we, you know, I, I definitely didn't expect them to, you know, to have 
all three of them exactly the same. Um, yeah, I, I find it very interesting that like the the middle is just no man's land in yeah es- like in essence like because normally in your shifting priorities like the middle point was the one that was the most hotly contested because that was just the one that was most easily accessible along that midline for the majority of characters. You could just sort of dogpile onto it. And that wasn't really the best strategy if you were, like, no, trying to be optimal because we knew for a fact that in shifting priorities, the middle was never active, right? Uh, from phase two. In, during for phase, phase two, two yeah. like, after you finished phase one, the middle was never active in phase two. So all of those people you've dogpiled on there are going to have to disperse and move out if they want to start contributing to objectives again. Yeah. Like, it, it's very interesting now that sort of things are being pushed out to the sides more, and therefore, you know, we're probably going to see a similar thing. It's just that it's not as much of a choice anymore as to, like, which one you're actually going for. Yeah, I mean, for, for for anyone who's come from MCP, it's it's the equivalent, isn't it, of like having being on a being on an E map for the first two rounds, and all of a sudden at round three, somebody pops up and goes, "Oh, I'm changing to a D now or a B," and you're like, yeah. "What?" But everyone's everyone's here, um, and you know, you win this game by scoring VPs, Quinn, as we know, right? You Wait, do what? not win. I know, right? Well, but let me ask, let me ask you this question, Quinn. Have you ever tabled anyone in Shatterpoint? Uh, I've flipped it a few times. Does that count? <laughs> that definitely doesn't count. That definitely doesn't count. Um, but yeah, I found it really interesting. Um, Quinn, let's talk about our um, our games that we've played and um, the Phase 1, because you would think, wouldn't you, that with six VPs on the table, you would be scoring... A lot, but actually, for the vast majority of turns, you're both scoring three, because yeah. all of a sudden, it it was it was quite viable to score three points to your opponent's one, uh, you know, in terms of like how many objectives you had versus what they had um, on uh, shifting priorities. You could sometimes get very lucky. And you know, take I oh, know it's, it's five objectives, wasn't it? In there were five in shifting on, yeah. If, so, if you got lucky, then you took the entire middle and were scoring four, yeah. You, you know, you could get four. Um, but the gap between where they were is a lot further than what these are as well. So, because everything's been brought in, um, you can easily get you know to, to other points in the map, you know, any any character that's got a you know a, a obviously a normal move and then maybe a dash or something like that and then a hunker, you know, take cover, they're probably going to be able to make it. Um so we found, didn't we, that they were switching a lot, but then with all of the reactive stuff, because there's essentially as many objectives as you have characters on the board, sometimes Less, you know, if you're running Inquisitors, it's well, impossible. You, units you've got on the board, right? <clears throat> uh, units, sorry, yes, yeah, units on the board. Um, like it, it's just a lot harder, isn't it, to have as much dominance, I think, in, in these ones as it was previously. And then because yeah. of that, what you find is this first struggle is back and forth a lot, and, and um, it, te- it, it still tends to go very fast though, because it's not a back and forth that leads to a stalemate because. No. Of, you know, the, the momentum mechanic, right? If I'm scoring three and then you're scoring three and we're going back and forth doing that, we're constantly bouncing back onto that. The game is coming in, the game is coming in. in. Yeah. Yeah, and then it comes to a bit more of an attrition game, right? Who can get that one extra um, momentum token from, you know, wounding a character or who can just push a character off a point and manage to flip that one extra extra VP? Um, but that's what I that's what I found, Quinn, is that it's playing these, it's rare that you will um you know, that you'll score any more than, you know, four to two, right? And I know that you don't both score, but you know, it, it, I think it's gonna be very difficult to um to score five in this just because of Yeah. Of of you know, because of the positioning of them. Um, I nearly did it that one time. 
You nearly did it. That one happened. Well, we've 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 it's we've only had access to them for less than a week. Quid. I'm I'm pretty sure you'll be able to at some point. Um, but yeah, overall thoughts on on phase one. Uh, big fan. I think it adds like having just guaranteed knowledge that that is the layout that you're playing. I think can lead to some very interesting plays that people are going to discover as we get more and more games in with like this set of missions. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, let's take a look then at the Struggle 2 cards, or Phase 2 cards. Um, so let's start off then with We Need More Time. I don't know who said that. I'm sure somebody said it within... The Star Wars universe. Uh, before. What wasn't that like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland? He was always on about. Time. No, 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 that's that's just he was late, wasn't he? He was late, late, late for a very important date, um, which was the tea party at the Mad Hatter's house. Obviously, no, wait, um, you need more time, like Han Solo or something. Is it one of those boring original trilogy characters? I don't know. It doesn't sound like a Han Solo thing. I, I don't know. Like I feel like, like you know, Harrison Ford could be like, "We need more time," you know. Sort of in uh, that stupid, angry way that he does things. I feel like there should be an exclamation mark at the end of it, though, if that's, if that's I don't what it think is. they do punctuation on the titles. <laughs> they don't do things. grammar, let alone Lando. Well, yeah, they, they don't there know what the word and does. Dave D- Fogel has answered it. us. It is Lando, yeah. Um, this is really interesting, Quinn, um, because they are so close. And this is the real big difference now. So we drop from the six down to the... I'm going to call it the traditional three that we see in phase two. We move to that two map option um, and it follows the exact same format uh, as the original mission pack did. So you've got the three symbols, you roll the dice at the beginning of each um, player's activation um, and then that particular one, whatever you roll, is double VP, so they score two, so there's a maximum of four available. Um, and then once again, you orientate the card always towards, and I had somebody ask me this question the other day, it's probably worth clearing up, the orientation of mission cards does not change throughout the game. Player one is always player one. Even if you lose the first struggle, and then you have priority, in the next one, you are not player one if you weren't player one when the game started. So they, they always orientate the same way. Um, and then this one has the press forward, Quinn. So we're going to see a repeat, aren't we? There is only those There is only those three. Um, but, yeah, thoughts thoughts on this, Quinn, and the fact that it is so close together? Yeah. Um, you know, n- neither of the side ones are active. So it is forcing those people that were out on the flanks to come on into the middle. Um, you know, it's got an objective that was completely vacant in the previous round to come online with that middle one, which means yeah. that maybe if you if you can spare the body or the activation, setting someone up on the middle in like you know in struggle one, like like I did with pawns in our game, yeah, could pay dividends, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and then obviously, yeah, you get that you get that press forward. Um, Next up, then, we've got their Jamming Our Comms. Now, this one is a little bit more spread out because you do have that one, uh, the, you know, the, the the block on this one, which is that little bit further away, too close together, one further away. This doesn't bring the middle one online, Quinn, which mm. I find very interesting because all of the Phase 2 struggles in the um, uh, Shifting Priorities mission pack um, all brought the middle one online. Um, I believe that's right. Oh, wasn't there, was there one no, that didn't? No, they, they that all one? turned the middle off. They, no, that was it. They all turned the middle off, didn't they? Yeah, because the middle was always online. But then with this one, um, they are they are mixing it up. Uh, this one gives you the regroup. Um, but yeah, this, this one is, you know, again, you spare that body for the middle and you're not guaranteed that that middle turns on. Um, I think this might be the first actual card where the orientation of first player matters. Oh, absolutely. If you look at the, this one that I've copied over and just flipped upside down, they don't match up at all. Let me let me grab let me grab this and put it side by side. What what have you no. done? 
No, it's it's gone the other way around because of the one it's stacked with. So just rotate it. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, you can see there, actually, it really it's does... A very big difference, actually. ...make a very, very big difference. Because, um, well, let's look. What, what happens? So... The expertise remains the same on both, right? It, yeah. it flips the sides, but they, 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 but the other ones, yeah, it's it's so, so very, actually, very different. What this does is it means that as first player, you are guaranteed to have whichever side objective, like middle side objective is active, be closer to one of your home points than the opponent's. Yeah. Which actually is quite a big advantage because obviously if you've got two points that are close together on your side, you can leverage more characters across the two points. I mean, you, you, you can argue that... I, I suppose it's pros and cons, right? Because while if you're the second player, and, 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 and you know, let's assume that, you know, second player is... Um, is going to take the, the block, right, if you don't win it, um, where you've got one that's isolated. It is still isolated, whereas the other two feel like there'll be more of a fight going on there. So, mm. But then, equally, it only takes an Assage to run around the back in one activation, force push whoever you've got on that back point, and all of a sudden, she's very difficult to, to get off. But no, it's it's very interesting, that, I, and I do think that... that probably you know does come into play um and could definitely matter um with them let's just get zoom back in there um but yeah i i i hadn't even thought of that quinn but it's a very very valid point that's why they pay you the big bucks um and then lastly <laughs> oh quick question do you think that because everything is so close together the inquisitors will be a lot better um Will they be a lot better? Their fundamental tech doesn't change. Um, uh, I would like to offer a statement regarding the Inquisitors on this mission pack, which they aren't better because they're closer together. They are better because you are more likely to encounter a deadlock on Struggle 1. Yeah. And therefore, their ability to break ties actually becomes means that very you are valuable. more likely to be the person that scores four on one of like your activations, and therefore just tips the scales that little bit in your favour. That suddenly means you're not getting momentum, like you're not adding a momentum on each side every single activation, and things are just going to slowly tick towards you, right? Yeah. Because that's what this game does, right? Especially in phase one, right? It's like, it's not, you know, it's not an absolute, unless somebody's playing really bad, it is back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's those little edges, those extra one VP here and there that to your point, Quinn, just pushes you past that zero or, you know, just, you know, because what you don't want to do is, you know, you end on zero it's as much benefit to your opponent as it is to you because you both get momentum. Obviously, unless you, you know, one of you is on full. Um, but just pushing it back that zero, oh, sorry, over that zero into the one um, can have a huge impact, can't it, in terms of um, the momentum and, and, and just, as you say, edging ahead and edging ahead. And all of a sudden, you find then that it's, all in your favour and your opponent can't do anything about it, but it takes takes a while. I plan on bringing them this weekend instead of my normal Veda Grievous or Mace Obelisk. Justin, what I would say is, mate, is like, play them. Like, they're not, they're not my favourites. I have just painted them up. They were my last box to paint. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll play some games with them. They're just not my favourite. But the Inquisitors just aren't my favourite as characters. So I mean, they're, they're missing Triller, Masana Tide, and Purge Troopers. That's all. I'm they're missing say. the best. 
They're missing the best part of the uh, of the of, of the what do we call them? Not affiliations. What do we refer to them as? Factions. 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 That was the one, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Inquisitorius is kind of a sub faction, right? Definitely. Yeah. Of of the Galactic Empire. Yeah. Um, and then finally we have didn't expect a welcome party. Uh, this one again, Quinn brings the um, the middle online, and he's not quite a mirror of we need more time. It kind of runs diagonally from left to right, doesn't it? it, it up the it, board. Of well, the um, three, I feel like this one is the most balanced across the board, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, it's it's fine. Like you know. You get stick to the plan, which means you get to refresh your your force. Um, I think what will be impactful is the tactics that you get during this phase two, as well as mm-hmm. um, the actual map layout as well. Again, if you're you know if you're running a a Dooku Cad Bane list, you don't care about force because you always have enough to spend on everything that you want. Um, if you're within a Mandalorian list and you've got a couple of wounds, you need to be very, very careful. Or if you're running a an Obi Annie list, for example, with lots of clones, you've got to be really careful about where you spend your force. Um, so I think that can really, really help. Um, you know, press forward on on we need more time getting a character up the board. Uh, maybe Luminara can do stuff now, Quinn. Who knows? No. <laughs> no. Fair. Fair. Um, but yeah, o- overall thoughts, Quinn, on Struggle Two, how it'll play out, what it does. Yeah, it, it it's gonna devolve into a scrap because that's you know that that's how the game goes. Uh, I think Struggle Two is overall across like all three phases in like this mission pack because we're gonna get onto Phase Three in a moment. Uh, phase two is the one where it is most advantageous to have lost the previous one. Oh, 100%. It's the only one where there's an advantage. It's the only one. It it is indeed the only one. Um, Yeah, but I do like it. I like the catch-up mechanic. I think it's a nice catch-up mechanic. Um, Look, we we had it in our game, right? I edged out Struggle 1, and then you... Very quickly won struggle two. Yeah, I pulled uh, because diagonal you... and just went. I have all four. Fight me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, literally your first activation, you scored four, and at yeah. that, I, I, at that point, I think I killed uh, some like supports as well. Whilst I was at it, yeah, T- took some took some of my characters off the board. Yeah, um, so really, really matters. Gives a really nice catch up mechanic to the player that lost. Um, you know. I think you'll often find struggle two going quickly. Yeah. If it goes quickly, it's probably the player, and this is not going to be every game, but it's probably the player that lost bringing it back and it being a one all. Now, Quinn, let's get on to struggle three. And I want to just talk about struggle three because I've seen, whilst I don't necessarily believe this to be absolutely true from the games that I've played I do get people's annoyance behind it because in shifting priorities first struggles no choice of map, makes sense right, you don't know what it's going to be um, but you know, no choice of maps, okay makes sense second struggle the player that lost the first one gets to choose which way around the map goes and we, or which, which which one of the two maps you're going to use. Perfectly makes sense. Nice catch-up mechanic. But then in shifting priorities, there was two maps in Struggle 3, and people's um, dislike of that was it heavily swung into the player who won the first Struggle's favour. Because yeah. in the same way that player 2 can then steamroll the second Struggle, the idea being that player one being the player that won the first one can then steamroll struggle three it, it made phase it made phase one the most important phase in the game right, in yeah. because yeah. Um, if you lose that struggle 
you have very, very low odds of being able to pull it back and win two of the prior objective struggles, right? You just had to get lucky with your positioning and what was pulled. That yeah. that came down to it at the end of the day. Um, let's take a look then at phase three for these guys. And starting off, Quinn, with find the escape tunnel. Mm. And we'll notice there is only one map. Uh, what? So, I know. I know. So I I quite like this, Quinn. I feel like this is a good balance. I feel like I could see this being something that is retro corrected on the shifting priorities. Is it intentional on shifting priorities though? Because obviously you pick your you yeah, pick the maybe. mission along with your with your yeah right team. So if you're gearing up for a strike team that is very very powerful in the you know early doors, like you're playing Separatists and you're bringing Kalani and you've got a lot of that movement up the board very early on, are you then going? Well, I'm going to take shifting priorities as my mission because I want to dominate in the first round and then have that very big advantage going into the second and third because either one is game for me to win, right? Yeah, didn't we hear about that's how the Ewoks are going to play? They're going to be mm. very, very strong early, and then, and then they're going they're to fall peter off. off. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe shifting yeah. priorities is an Ewok map, you know? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, this. I mean, this this is a lot more spread out now, Quinn. This is this yeah. is as far apart as three points can be uh, on on this map, um, as in from from each other. Um, so yeah. No real advantage. I mean, the thing is, by the time you're getting into struggle three, deployment edge, unless you're both running gun lines and shooting each other and nothing else, like deployment edge kind of disappears, really, it, doesn't it? it at this matters. point, it just you know it it erodes away over the course of the game, right? Yeah. Uh, and this one brings stick to the plan, so that's going to be the the force refresh. Then we've got Signal the Transport. So this is a mirror of uh, Find the Escape Tunnel. Uh, this one's going to have the regroup, so the remove damage or one condition from itself. Um, again, it's it's as far away as, as three points can be. Uh, and once again, only a single map, uh, which you know I, I do like the difference in there. And then lastly, and I think the spiciest one, Quinn, is get to the hangar bay and i love that get to the hangar bay and i've got my hangar bay that i built and it's in the mod so um <clears throat> if you want to go check that out you can do um yeah really like this um especially the fact that this is the one that gives the movement as well yeah so, so everybody's rushing to the middle yeah so this is the closest you know i think typically quick queen what you're going to find there is people will gravitate to one of the edges. Yeah. And then it's the middle one that gets fought over every single turn. Um, I don't know if we have said it, but obviously each of these from phase two, from phase two onwards, they all use the same mechanic of roll the dice. That's what those symbols are. Whatever symbol you get is, is double VPs that turn. Um, but yeah, this, this feels like the fighty one at the end, uh, which I'm all down for. Yeah, I, um, I also like that they've thrown one in the mix that has none of the sort of home objectives in. Yeah. Because up until that point, you always knew that you were going to have one of the two home objectives on each side active. So you want to be pushing towards those. Whereas now, if you go for that and then suddenly, you know, you're just out of luck and pull the get, get to the hangar bay, you're you're in dire straits, you know? Yeah, especially with you know, especially with the big hitters, right? Um, who can very easily take out, you know, because at this point, when you've only got three, you know, active objectives on the board, support characters become very important because they're you know they there's two of them versus the one in secondary and primary, but some primaries out there who just you know 
cut through them like butter, don't they? And it can make a really big difference when you're getting into this stage of the game. Um, and anyone with force put, you know, for this one in particular, like force pushes and that sort of thing, I yeah. think are going to be um, very, very powerful. Characters with early shoves on their combat trees are going to be very, very handy as well. Um, so, yeah, I I really like it. I think I think it's a very welcome addition, and I just I I don't know about you, Quinn, but I I just can't believe how different yeah. this game feels with these new struggles. Like it it's really weird how just changing the layout of the maps ever so slightly, adding in an extra little bit there with the tactics, you know. Changes it up so much. There's um, a reason to want to win Pryo now. Hooray! Yeah, well, and also, absolutely, absolutely. So let, let, let's run through that, Quinn, for people that don't know. So obviously, um, when you build a strike team, it's made up of multiple things. So it's made up of your, obviously, two squads. So your two primaries, two secondaries, two support units. But an element that we haven't really talked about a lot because it's never really been relevant up until now is you do pick a mission pack to bring to the, to the fight. Um, now the big difference between this and MCP is you were always guaranteed to get half of what you wanted in MCP. Yeah. Um, it's all or nothing with this, isn't it? If you really hate um, shifting priorities and that's what your opponents brought, tough yeah that's what you're I, I that's really what you're playing like that as well from a competitive standpoint because you have to build a list that can at least operate functionally on every single mission you can't just yeah. you know throw everything aside and go i'm all in on shifting priorities because it's just not how it works no absolutely you, you really really oh, do th this need is the super special to... map i was talking about oh okay oh, yeah, yeah. With, with the map that says ignore me you right click oh. it and just delete the text I'll have a look at that. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 it adds another element into it, doesn't it? All of a sudden, you've got to build to be able to deal with, with both. And also, you know, with maps as well. And, you know, I have... People have been um, talking to me about maps. I've obviously been building a lot of maps on TTS. Um, but it... You, there's now a lot more in the game that you need to account for when you're building your squad. It isn't just a case, and obviously this is we're talking about this playing at a you know a somewhat competitive level, um, but it really does make a difference, doesn't it, Quinn? Now in terms of what you're going to bring and, and and what to expect, because there's multiple things in there now that can affect how you deploy and where you need to be and how you know how powerful are droids. On, mm. you know, on on that, you know, on a on a um, sabotage showdown, I actually don't think they're as powerful. I, I they they their coverage doesn't get them to where they to where they want to be. Um, but but there's yeah, something lots... weird going on with the mod for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's... You, you know the deck where you get all your character cards from. Yeah, can't right click. Oh wait, what? No, can't right click it. It, it just grabs the Cerebro platform. Oh. Weird. Very strange. I'll have a look at that. But what we wanted to show you guys was how these look on the map as well, because it's fair to say, Quinn, isn't it, that, um, well, at least in your opinion, the artwork on the card, on the mission cards, makes it look like those central two objectives on your back point and your opponent's back point are very, very close. Yeah, um, it's nothing to do with the pin. That is just what it looks like. like. Yeah. So let's bring down shifting... Uh, sorry, Sabotage Showdown. So you see we've got the one in the middle here and then we've got the six around the outside. And I believe, Quinn, the way it's been done... So what's that? 25 centimetres, say... 25 centimetres. Yeah, they're all kind of equidistant. From 25 centimetres. So, yeah, they're all... Yeah. Other than the the middle ones to the edge... No, they're, and then, they're still pretty equidistant. 
I uh, not for, not to the edge. I mean, yeah, to, from, to, like, to, to the edges, but this, to this, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they're all, you know, they're, they're, there's the same sort of distance. But at first, it looked like the the two at the bottom. So this one here and this one here, it looked like they were a lot closer. And the question was, if I just pull a, uh, let me just pull a B1. Let me just pull these here. So the question at first was, can we be here right in the middle and be on both points? And the answer is, fortunately, I think, Quinn, yeah. no. Uh, I don't think or that would have the been... The answer's no, so long as these measurements are correct, which I really hope they are. Uh, these measurements are correct. Yeah. I know, so I mean, the I can... stupid diagram looks wrong. <laughs> so five, you got five here, look. Oh yeah, I'm not debating that those are five and two in. It's a question of whether they're. Oh, like you you think whether they should stupid. be five and three? Well, because of the stupid way they look, like uh, yeah, just irritates me. So Quinn, let's talk about deployment. Let's get rid of. Um, let's clear these objectives here a second, and let's just put in shifting priorities, just yeah. to sort of compare and contrast. Because it was fairly straightforward, wasn't it? Shifting priorities. You took leader one, put them in the middle. Deployed somebody here, deployed somebody here, and generally someone in the middle, creating this little diamond formation. You did that again on this side of the map, and bish bash bosh, you've got all three of your back points covered. Because in shifting priorities, we didn't know um, what was going to be the active objective, and only one of your back points was ever active during the first phase. Um, Things have changed now, Quinn, obviously. Uh, let's just turn that off a second. So things have changed. Let's bring back uh, Sabotage Showdown. Let's come back. Let's come over to your side of the screen and take a look then. Um, how are you approaching deployment now? Because mm. it, it's a little bit tougher, isn't it? Because you want to be out wide. Because you want to make sure yeah, you, you, know, you, you can you, access you, these you wide cover points. you want to your home base. Is that not I, I can't even click the deploy button, that's good. <laughs> there you go. Right, there we are. And Luke is floating into the sky for some reason. Crash. There we go. But yeah, you, you kind of want to be... Th this map isn't the best for it, because obviously you've got these cargo containers here, but you're probably putting someone towards the middle, probably two people within range of that central objective that you're on your home base. And then one more out wide who can then, you know, sort of run up the board and try and get one of those wide points for you. Yeah, because that's ideally... Um, I, and again, Quinn, whereas you started with one and it was quite easy turn one um, to go and get two other points. It, it, I think if it's you're going activating to... a support unit, then yeah, pretty much. A support yeah. unit or, you know, the Kalanis or, you know, the, there was a few different, um, you know, ones in there that could do it yeah. um feels like it's going to be very difficult if not nigh on impossible maybe not impossible maybe droids if you get the right combination of things could still potentially do it but it feels hard right to to pull because you know realistically you're only going to be getting this one and this one right to give you four yeah. um feels really hard I, I i've done it in one of my practice games uh, I have managed to have my first activation grab both wide points. And and how how did you do that out of interest? Uh, it was a combination of pon, uh, ponds allowing you to deploy range two and aft troopers. So it was okay. range two deployment from Windu and then move, hunker, defensive maneuver. Right? Which just about gets you over there to the extent of two. That's fair. That's fair. No, but again, I think it's going to be... Uh, do you reach the objective from deployment? It looks close. Uh, you, you definitely reach the objective. Oh, yeah, 100% does, yeah. Right, yeah. like, you go there, Luke takes ages to fall over, and then, like, you don't even and go you... straight up. You can't... This is an important thing regarding deployment on both missions, in my opinion, is I prefer to try and double up with... Uh, multiple characters from different units. Different units, yep. Yeah, 100%. Because that way, if you draw one of the two units that's on one of your active points, you 
Like, if, if that's the only unit on there, and you want to move off and, like, you know, expand and grab more territory, you're actually not grabbing your own, which can be quite detrimental if you're going second. The, because that's when scoring actually matters. People aren't going to come and get your well, homes, most likely. No, 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 no. This, this only matters when you are going first. Because if you're going second... If you're going second, you already captured it, actually. You've yeah. already captured mm. it, so it doesn't it doesn't make a difference. But I, I agree with Just to I'm... highlight, that goes there very comfortably. Yeah. That goes there very comfortably. Yeah. And probably the other one goes about there-ish, as I said. To the, yeah, to, to, to either side, absolutely. Yeah, kind of there, and then, yeah. Yeah, so then you get the option there, don't you? So you're player one, you get C3PO first, great, you can move them up, and then the bounty hunters are still taking this, or you move the bounty hunters up and C3PO is still there yeah. and can do it. Um, so, yeah, and I feel like that that is, you know, and then you mirror that on this side, right? So you take Padme, you do a similar sort of thing, Um you know, you have put, a handmaiden up there and save, and then you, yeah, you put a save here. Oh, you put a handmaid, and these these are not going to be completely accurate, but and then you put the other one there, right? So again, you've got your two within range two. Um, yes, I just got it there, um, and then you've got these two back points covered, and irrespective, um, you can you can do that. Um, I think talking about particular factions and particular affiliations Quinn um I think I think seps are going to be okay early doors on these um because it actually makes Kalana deployment much easier than yeah. what it was previously because you're a lot less better. um because you're, you're much more you know you're much closer together but yeah how have you um how have you just how have you found it Quinn like how have you found Playing the game, how have you found it coming back and not coming back, but you know, trying out these these new maps and yeah, um, it, it's interesting. Like I feel like it's it, it's not a necessarily a breath of fresh air. It is something new, but it's just it, it's nice having something where different factions, as we've been calling them, are advantage and or disadvantage compared to like you know what has been the norm since the game released. Yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I would say that Republic are probably a lot better on Sabotage Showdown than they are Shifting Priorities. They're still good on Shifting Priorities, but I think Sabotage Showdown just does a lot of things that Republic like. Yeah. That is fair. Question there. In fact, I want to go a couple of questions back, actually, to King Mark. Says, new to Shatterpoint, is this pack making the game more full? Or we still need a squad pack or twelve for that. I I think, I think we can look at the game right now, Quinn, and say there is enough variety, especially now with getting these this second mission pack. Um, there's enough variety into the in the game where you could comfortably go to a let's see a. a 24 person tournament right and you're not going to be playing against the exact same strike team with the exact i mean obviously you know mission packs there's only two of them right so it's limited but um i feel like there's enough in here now where we're not just going to be coming up against the same thing time and time again like you know when we when we first started playing the game we went to a few different events didn't we it was like you turned up and people were either playing you know Dooku with Asajj, or Dooku with Ventress, or Obi with Annie, Dooku or Dooku with Annie. Asajj, or Dooku with Ventress. Uh, sorry, Dooku, do, do, Dooku with um, Dooku with Maul. Sorry, um, and you know you might get a full Mandalorian list, but there was very little in the way of variety, and there was very little in the way of um, letting people be creative and look at things outside of the synergy with factions right because that was the only thing i think now we're starting to see there are other things that can work together well um that you can build a roster or a, a strike team around sorry not a roster um outside of that faction um synergy i don't, I don't know if you agree quinn or yeah i think we're getting to a point where sort of the the overarching factions like you know 
your, your Grand Army of the Republic, your Confederacy of Independent Systems, eventually Rebellion, eventually Empire. They are getting to a point where they are not only big enough to have some variety in them, but they're getting big enough to the point where you can actually have two completely different lists within the two of them. Yes. Like, you know, so some lunatic could run Luminara Ahsoka with the Republic, and you would denounce them as being a lunatic, and probably have them institutionalised. Uh, but, you know, someone could be running that, and then another person could be running, like, Anakin Kenobi. The other person could be running, like, Plo uh, Mace, right? Like, you've got enough options there where you can do three distinct lists. Um, also, lists are very much shaped at the moment by the primaries you take, I find. Yeah. Because of those identities, you know, that they are identities, right? That they are what makes your list your list. I, I, I would argue there are some exceptions, maybe one. I would say Kalani is probably the exception to that rule in mm. terms of... I, I, I feel it's more about him and what he does rather than what Dooku does or what Ventress does or what Maul does. Uh, that Maul's not really a Sep, is he? But Maul, you get Maul's what I mean. I, I would argue that Grievous is more of a I, identity... I, the identifying character in a Grievous list than Kalani is, for example. That's fair. Grievous does a lot of stuff. Um, and, like, Dooku's identity is a reactive one, so it's all it's never gonna feel quite as active, right? It's not gonna be as in your face. But I think it does a lot for that list and how it works. Oh, still. it does a huge amount for it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um and then Sean has said, have you tried these kind of positioning breakdowns with the Inquisitors since they only have the one support model in one squad? Um the way that I would approach that, and and Quinn uh, disagree or agree as you would see fit, um, you just you deploy in that initial format. So, uh, primary character directly behind the main objective, and then your secondary, secondary and support, your support, and then in front. wherever the you know the the non-objective support was going to go, they're just not there. Yeah, exactly that. So that one that would have been off to either the left or to the right, they don't they don't happen now. Who you put on the right and who you put on the left of that little thing, even though it's only a small little thing, it can make a difference. Um, you know, if you know that there's an ingress point that with a dash and an advance you can get to, and you've got a character who can get to it, put that character on the side of that is closest to the ingress point. Um, you know, if you've got characters who can move other people around, that may play into it as well. But yeah, I think you you deploy in that format. Um, and you don't worry too much about it. Um, how how much of an advantage does Pons now have with this new setup? Because he allows a lot of additional. Well, it's it's not. A, it's quite a bit, right? It's, it's he lets it's you deploy three times as far away. Three times as far away, right? Do you think he becomes very viable now? I mean, he was always sort of viable I mean, or The, the reason that but... you take pawns in any given list is because you are using it to beat points limitations. There is no reason why you would ever take You're using pawns. it because you're taking Mace Windu. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, you know, you're, you're being a scrub and playing Vader and Republic because for some reason he has that tag. Fix it's it, AMG. Right. Fix it. I, I, know you, I, don't, I know you don't watch this content because you hate Rich, but still, fix it. Um, it's not. It's not right, Quinn. It's not right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Is my it? new empire? You're not even in the suit yet. <laughs> it's an empire. Um, Inquisitors have to take pawns. Uh, I mean, no. If you want to run all Inquisitors, you don't have to run Vader. Yeah, they're going to say you don't. You don't have to take. You don't have to take pawns. There's if a, you want to have both. Like, if you want to have as many Inquisitor characters as you possibly can, then yes, because that's you counting Vader as an Inquisitor when he should be. I mean, he, he should have the Inquisitorious tag, but he's not an Inquisitor, right? He should have the Inquisitorious tag, because he's yeah. ultimately the head. Yeah, but he is the head honcho of the You don't look at Vader and go, oh, that, that, that's that Inquisitor man there. You go, no, that, that's not <laughs> Vader. He's his own thing. Deary me, deary me. Um... 
Cool. Okay, guys. So let's. Oh no, not that bit there. Um, Quinn, many, many moons ago, we had a painting competition. Um, That's no it's, moon. It 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 seems. Oh no, I've spoiled it. Oh. No, no. There we go. Many, many moons ago. <laughs> Uh, we, had a painting, Richard, you we had a painting competition um, and we do these every two weeks when we when we have the show. Oh, I, I thought it was like five years. Yeah, it feels like it. Um, and last time, many, many moons ago, we asked you to submit your bounty hunters. Or, or, or specifically, I asked you to submit your bounty hunters. Uh, we got lots of really, really good entries you had plenty of time to get them in. Um, and as always with our painting competitions, it is not necessarily the person who has painted the best, right? We want to put that out there. We can, we, we know the differences, but if all we did every week was pick the best painters, we've got some professional painters in our community and it would be boring seeing those same 10, 15 people win every single time. So we're looking for other things as well. And this one, Quinn, most definitely caught our eye, didn't it? Um, so it's from C. Anon. I think I'm saying that right, Quinn. Am I saying that Anon. right? Canon. Canon. I think Canon, isn't it, is, is how it's how it's pronounced. It's a silly made-up name. Meh. All names are made up, Quinn. No. Um, but Meow de Perna, this is Cat Bane. What have you got to say about Cat Bane, Quinn? Is there any bleach going around for my eyes? <laughs> you picked this! I know, I picked it for the meme. <laughs> well, I, I, it just tickled me, Quinn, when when, when I saw this. Um, you know, he's obviously put a lot, you know, he's put effort into the conversion. He's got the tail on there. He's got the little ears on there. It's a cute little thing. Um, so really well done to you, buddy. Um you go, have we got a prize draw going for Shatterpoint? I, have I can't no remember. Idea. If we have, you'll get entered into it. Um, but, Quinn, that does bring how the turns have tabled, uh, brings it back round to you, and you get to pick this week's theme. I would like to see your Anakins. Wow. Well. They doesn't count. Okay, because he is Anakin Skywalker. No, what? What? No, he's not. He <laughs> killed Anakin Skywalker. That's what Ben Kenobi said. Ben Kenobi's a fucking liar, Quinn. <laughs> what? I've only seen a New Hope. What are you talking about? <laughs> imagine if that. Imagine if that's all you'd ever. What you had? Do you know what? This is the epitome of cinema. I need to see no more. <laughs> How happy all of those little rebels are. Blowing up that big thing. They've oh, won. They won. Yay. They've won. Nothing can go possibly wrong now. And Luke has avenged his father. <laughs> the end. And, and, then gonna, and then he's gonna marry Leia. <laughs> and he's gonna marry Leia. Yes. They're gonna be they're gonna be in love happily ever after. Um anyway. Um Apparently they didn't know, did they, when they were doing that? Like obviously Empire hadn't been written and they didn't know that that was gonna be a thing. Um But but it was. And it was weird. So there we go. Quinn, anything else to add before we let these lovely people go home? Uh try the new mission. It's fun. The new missions are really fun. Um sign ups for the November's Shatterpoint event. Are they up? You've not put them up. I haven't put them up, have I? No. Let me check. I can't remember. Has the other one finished? I, I don't know. There might be a game or two left, but I've, I have won the event, if that's what you're asking. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Quick, Quinn, tell everyone about your win streak. Pretty high. Yeah. Oh, God, there's like three or four games left to play in that. Uh, we'll 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 keep that one open for a week or so just to let yeah. people finish them off. Um, but check out Discord um, in the next hour. I'll be putting up the next event. Uh, we'll give everyone a couple of days to register, and then it'll be a game per week. Um, no restrictions. 
um, around anything, you just need to bring your strike team. And that does now include which mission pack you're going to be using as well. Um, I will say, guys, don't don't get annoyed if your opponent brings the, um, the original one and that what that's what you have to end up playing. Like, like that, have the conversation. What their list prefers. Like, yeah, ha- have yeah. the conversation if you want, but it's it's part of the game. Um, Rich, are you going to play Star Wars Unlimited? That's the new Star Wars card game, I think. Oh, is that the card game? I've I've seen a couple of things on this. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like card games of this nature. I can never remember the way around that they are. Is it living card games or trading card games that the trading the, card game is you you very very unlikely to get a full set of anything. Yeah, a living yeah, card game is you know what you're buying in every pack. You know what you're buying in advance. Yeah, so. I I like a living card game. I've got examples of them on my shelves. Um, you know, I've got some Arkham Horror. I've got some Marvel Champions. I've got some other ones as well. Game um, of Thrones card game is a very good living card game. Game of Thrones card game is very good, yeah. Um, I hate spending money, and I don't know what I'm getting. Right, there's... I have a real hatred of things like FIFA and things like that. One of the reasons I stopped playing them is because of essentially loot boxes. And it is just gambling, no matter which way you look at it. If you're spending money on something and it has a varied outcome and and, and it can be really good or really bad, that's just gambling. Um, And I don't like that. I don't... I'm, I'm also a... If I start something, I want to finish it, as in the collection... That's not good for my wallet if I start playing a game like that. So, unfortunately, not an Esto. I may take a look at it um, if it's, you know, if it's on TTS. I might have a look, see what it's like, and then I might buy some cards if I like the cards. Um, and then I'll always have TTS to be able to play on if I do just want to play. You know, these these are the characters I want. Um, but yeah, not not a fan of trading card games for that reason. Like, I used to collect football stickers when I was a kid. Real football, not that weird American one where you don't kick it. Um, I see. I used to collect Star Wars stickers as a kid. Well, I, I used to get. Change. I used to get Star Wars stickers as well. Um, you can try it for free. Single player versus AI in Force Table. I'll have a look at it. I'll take a look, but. Yeah, generally I stay away from them. Uh, it's a reason why I don't play things like Magic or any of the other ones like that. You, you don't play Magic because there's too much reading involved in Magic. <laughs> and then, have you ever walked into a room where there's? Oh, I was from... there at the event, Rich. I Jesus. remember walking through the haze from the front of the shop to the back. Honestly, some shower gel and deodorant should be included with every booster pack. Um... <laughs> Hey, you cook the ball just not as often. <laughs> you do kick the ball just not as often. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Is it basically going to be Pokemon but Star Wars? I, I have no idea, Kendo. Ernesto, can you can you enlighten us? I don't think it's going to be like Pokemon's, as far as I can tell. Not not many things are like Pokemon's. Yu-Gi-Oh! Is that a Pokemon thing? I don't think that's like Pokemon. I think Digimon's the closest thing to Pokemon's. Or maybe Digimon's the one that I was thinking of. I'm too too young for Pokemon's. Yeah? You're too old for them. Um, No, I was about the right age. Oh, were you the right age for Pokemon's? For For the TV show, yeah, absolutely. No, it's not like Pokemon. Cool. And I will... I will tell you no more. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. It's close to magic. Uh, uh. Weirdly, I don't mind digital. One. Like I play Marvel Snap. I played yeah. Jewel Force. Gwyn, we've played some Gwent. Um, we, you know, I've played a lot of them online. The, I think the thing with online trading card games, and they're not really trading card games, but you can't typically, trade the cards, really. <laughs> Well, no, but typically there is always a crafting element in them yeah. where you destroy X number of cards and you can then create another one. 
you can't do that in real life. <laughs> like, I can't rip up the 59th C3PO that I've got and create a, a Vader. A Vader or, you know, Black Chrysanthemum or, you know, whoever, whoever it is um, who you want. So I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like the physical ones. Um, but I'll take a look. I'll have a look online and see if there's a good online version of it. Um, I'll, I'll definitely be interested, but yeah, physical card games. Um, I only get enough, you know, I rarely get enough time to play the two games that I play in person Adding in a card game to it, it just yeah it doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't really work. Unfortunately, keeping me awake. Right, guys, we're gonna leave it there. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed this uh, edition of Diwana Wanga. Uh, big shout out to all of our patrons. Um, you really really do help continue to allow us to be able to make these somewhat professionalish videos. Um, um, you can support us on Patreon for as little as a pound a month. There'll be a link down in the description below. Also, a big shout out to Leodis War Games, our lo my local gaming centre here, and also the sponsor of the channel. They've recently won a whole bunch of awards. They've got a great gaming centre, uh, and there's an offer at the moment down in the description where you get a five pound voucher off your first order that I think is over fifty pounds or something like that. Um, Head on over to the Discord. That's where you'll be able to find details of the next Shatterpoint event that we run. Um, and as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, 